Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do, this is basically the process. Uh, so I'm just gonna show you one that I started already. And I'm gonna, not gonna save any changes. Uh, I'm not too worried about saving changes because all I've done is just revealing or hiding masks. Um, so this is uh, something that I've been, you know, since yesterday, I finished the details and I thought, oh, might as well, I'm gonna try to speed things up and set this up for you so that I can show you. Um, it's not final, but it's it's a bit more, it has a bit more work than what I managed to do today. Uh, like I said, I'm not worried about deleting stuff that, uh, or, you know, cancel this project without saving because it wasn't the final um, and I saved this smart material. So if I wanna use some of the smart materials that I created uh, with you guys here, uh, that's all I have to do. I can click on blue base creature and I can just drop it into my creature. This is, let's say an, a different project and I have it there. So I can use the same, um, the same workflow. Um, this one is a little bit darker, a bit more, you know, less, uh, less cute. <laughs> um, but it's using the same techniques um, as I as I show you. I just use some of the bases like the cucumber skin, and you'll see I used to a cucumber skin and a grapefruit skin just to get things a little bit more, you know, variate things a little bit more. Uh, but it's pretty much the same thing as I show you, just like masks, for example. Um, say the, this the Bix. It, this is like a, a, a HSL perceptive to to change the color. Uh, of these sort of like horn areas, um, you know, it's just manually painted. Same thing as the blue. This is exact, exactly what I show you with the lighter blues of the one before. So it's just an HSL perceptive changing the, the hues a bit. Um, this is the blue channel and this is the red channel. Um, and you see, I didn't use a single anchor point in here. So this is just the the first part of the workflow that I show you without any anchor points. So we're going to wrap it up right now. This is just changing the color of what I already have. So it's, if I turn this off, this HSL perceptive, you see it's the same blue thing. Um, so I'm just changing the hues. But that's what I'm saying is it's kind of like blocking it out. Um, in the extra mile course, I, I covered that as in we first block everything out, like very simple. And then we focus on changing the properties of materials. So I haven't created a, like a, you know, like a horn proper material, but it sort of gives you an idea um, of what it is, but it's using just the, the technique I showed you today. Uh, this workflow that I shared with you guys, it's a non-destructive workflow. So um, anything, anything that I do that I have here, I can go back and easily change it. So if I don't want to have this character to be blue as the base, I can just add, I don't know, green or red very easily, just changing one slider. Um, so I tend to go a lot of like back and forth. So something I like to do with the teeth, uh, depending you know, mainly from creatures, really. So I start with a base, let's say something like this, uh, something shiny. All right. And then I create another layer and then I'll go from a, for a darker color, a bit more rough like that, and then black and then like black mask and then add a paint layer. Uh, and this one, this is the trick. I just use a slightly different brush, but that's about it. That's the, the whole trick. Um, I like to use um, this one, these hairlines, right? Um, let's click on this layer and I'm gonna make sure that the height is pushed in. So it sort of creates those nice ridges. So I'm gonna click on paint, reduce my brush size, and let's focus on this one right here. So I can go ahead and do this. Very subtle stuff. But it creates those like, yeah, those nice sort of ridges and, and cracks on the, on the teeth. Uh, so it's, it's sort of like the type of thing that you can do in ZBrush if you spend the time. I just didn't spend the time so I could do it. Um, and I didn't do it in ZBrush because I know I could do it in Painter. Like this type of tiny details will be pretty easy to do in Painter. Um, and if it is too strong or if it's not, you can add to the... To the mass, you can add a levels and you can contrast that mass to make it sharper. So the other way around, right? So you can make this really strong. Uh, and then you can also add a blur. Like so, right? So that already looks a, a little bit more interesting. So yeah, it's just a matter of like spending the time working on the, on the textures, but it is more of the same. It's just like how you approach it. But uh, that's a, a quick tip on 
how you can edit or add extra details, uh, not only on, on for like teeth, but it could be for anything. Um, you know, all these horns and everything could be could be the same way. Um, uh, I usually just have the eyeball here. Uh, I don't I don't have so it's just like a layer with reflective uh, material. Um, I don't have I don't bring in um, the sclera the sclera sorry the the cornea so the the reflective part of the eye that is usually transparent. Uh, I don't bring it into, it's, it's a mesh that I don't bring into Painter because I usually don't have UVs for that. So there's no need for it. Um, and it's also transparent. But nowadays with, with Painter, you can very easily create transparency and see it. I just don't find the value on it. So I just like leave this one like, like here and then I will uh, eventually, you know, add a, you know, it could be just like a paint layer with a blue color, something very bright, let's say like this. Um, with a black mask, then a paint layer, and then let's select something like a hard shell thingy like that. And then I can create another layer, uh, with slightly brighter black paint. That's going to be right in the center, maybe less than that. And then I can add to that layer some blurriness. So I'm just trying to use the same thing that I just showed you to show you that um, it can be done quite easily. I want to make sure that I remove the roughness to all of these layers so it uses the, the roughness below. And then one more layer. Um, actually, yeah, let's use that one uh, with a black color. So this will be the pupil, right? So it's not, it's not great, but I mean, you could just go ahead and um, tweak it. So if it's, it's not really fitting within the, the character, you can drop in a hue saturation, for example, or saturate that and make it darker, change the color just to integrate it a little bit more, or you can just select the layer itself and just change it quite a bit. Right. So that's the, the value of the non-destructive workflow. Um, but I will spend a lot more time on the, on the eyes just to cover that. If you want to change this to be kind of like a subsurface scattering, uh, let's do that really quickly. Uh, you need to uh, add a few things. So three things you can need to go to the texture set settings and in the channel, you need to add some um, scattering. So I just added the scattering channel. So now we can have scattered. Uh, actually, let me select the, the body and I'll do it in the body. All right. So again, first is adding the scattering channel. I want to create a new layer and go to properties. And you see this layer now um, has six channels. So this scat is the scattering. So I'm going to hold the alt key and leave that on. And I'm going to push the scattering towards you know positive values. Uh, you won't see anything because you need to enable scattering. So three things. The first one is to have the channel. The second one is in the channel of one new layer, you need to have a scattering other than zero. So that is visible. Um, and then the third thing is in the actual shader. Uh, sorry, not the shader, the display settings. Um, we can go to, I always miss it, tone mapping active. So surface scattering here. So uh, this subsurface, I'm just going to increase it. Uh, but there is now uh, we need to change things in the shader. Where? I, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I usually, um, yeah, I usually have it when I'm doing this type of things. I do it from here. So I just click on the shader. I thought it was in this one, but it's here. The 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 shader settings, right? So uh, we just need to go to um, here interior where it says enable, uh, not translucency, enable subsurface scattering parameters. So I'm going to click on enable, uh, and then we're going to choose uh, what you want to have as the as the base, so scattering type, redshift. This is probably the, the best thing uh, for general purposes. Um, skin uh, gives you like a, a color for the scattering and they can change the scale. Uh, it's not going to be very visible. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scale it like so. Uh, and then I'm going to go back to my layer properties and I'm going to push the scattering. It's not going to be very visible actually. Uh, it's just that because I have really dark colors, it's very hard to see. So this layer that has the, the scattering, I can control how much I want to have. So no scattering or a bunch of scattering, right? And from the shader properties, you can change the scale. So how much like the reach of that scattering value. Um, but again, because I have like these really dark tones, it's, it's kind of like not visible. Um, 
yeah, but that's how you enable scattering if you want to use scattering. You can just have a layer and you can also control that based on a mask. So in my case, maybe I, I won't have the skin scattering on these uh, on these horns. So I can go ahead and is this the one? Yeah. So I can maybe drop an anchor point here and then go here and create create a black mask, fill layer, select that fill layer and reference that anchor point in here. So I'm going to invert it as well. So you see now the the scattering is only happening in the skin and not in the in the bone area. Uh, so that's another cool way of doing it. All right. So let's wrap it up with just a couple of tips. If you want to render this guy out, uh, I'm actually, uh, these eyes are bothering me. I'm not going to keep them. I'm going to just have the dark eyes uh, for now. Okay. So um, you can export this texture, set it up into a I don't know, marble set or whatever you want, Blender, and it will work nicely. Um, that's kind of like the beauty of this workflow of the PBR workflow that you just export a bunch of textures and it um, can be rendered anywhere. But uh, you can, if you don't want to export things, you can create a nice um, render or a nice screenshot here from, um, from Painter. So what I'll do is, uh, you don't have to do this, but I like to do it. So in the display settings, you can click on at the top, you can click on shadows, all right? And then you can just go ahead and choose like a nice angle. And this on its own is like a pretty nice uh, work in progress that you can wait until it dresses up a little bit, screenshot that and share it, let's say. Uh, but if you click on this icon right here, this is the eye ray and it's kind of like a, it's, it's a different way of ray tracing <laughs> in a way, but it's, it's really powerful um, and it gives you a really nice result all within Painter. So I'm gonna click on that. And this is gonna take a little while to warm up uh, depending on your on your graphics card uh but yeah that is a really nice render and then you can see all the details and all the the, the roughness and everything uh so a couple of things that i like to do um i usually you know having like a like a low res background like i have here it bothers me it just makes me like okay this is not completed yet so i like to go to display and in the display you have this clear color when i click on clear color and that gives me a clean color um, Usually, I just go for a darker tone, depending on on yeah, depending on the on the textures of my character. If I'm doing something like a xenomorph, kind of like alien that is mainly uh, black with some shiny things, maybe I'll have a different color. But I don't know. In this case, I think a dark, oh, yeah, pure black works best. Um, and I'm just moving things around just in the same way that uh, you would move uh, in Painter mode and left. Right click to move things around. Um, the way that you change the lighting is also very simple. We can click on the viewport thing and go up and we have this environment map. This is the panorama. If you click here, um, you have a bunch of them that come with Painter. One of the uh, my favorite ones is the Tomoko Studio when I'm actually doing the textures because it has a very neutral white, um, white light and it is actually um, gives you a nice result. So let me just show you. Um, Tomoko Studio, where is it? Oh, don't tell me I don't have it now. Tomoko? Ah, here. Studio Tomoko. So I'm going to click on that one. So you see, it doesn't change things too much, but the, the shadow is not as sharp anymore. So you have like this nice gradient of shadows. Um, and it's a, a pretty neutral light, so it doesn't have like any tint of blues or, or greens or anything. So it gives you a very nice result. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rotate and see, maybe we can find a more dramatic lighting, although this sort of hides most of the character. Um, so I think I'm, I'm going to go for, let's see, something like this. I want to be able to see the eye of the character because that's the, what we're naturally drawn to, towards. To. Um, another thing you can do is on display, click on camera and you can play with the depth of field. So you can flatten it or you can exaggerate the perspective. Uh, in my case, I want to flatten it a little bit just because I think um, this guy has a really cool sort of profile. So that's my, that's what I want to try to capture in my render. Most of the profile and a bit of like the inside of the mouth, that would be cool. All right, so that's it. I'm just going to let this rest up uh, and then you can just screenshot this or, or save this image. Um, 
yeah, um, there is a way of, sorry, uh, you can send it to Photoshop as well, uh, but there is a way, um, choo -choo -choo, let me see. Yeah, from that little, uh, I think it's a, it's like a gear icon with a magnifying glass. So you can increase the samples or the, the rendering time. So you see that my status is done. If I rotate, it starts rendering again. So it needs to go to uh, a thousand iterations. So that's why I'm just like waiting until it reses up. Uh, and when it gets to, to that point, then I can save my render. Um, so I'll wait until, yeah, it's finished. A hundred, sorry, hundred iterations of a thousand. So uh, I might just change the, um, the time to go for maybe 50 seconds. And that you see, it just goes up into the resolution. The more that you leave it, the, the better the quality, but I think already is creating a pretty decent uh, result. So yeah, you just click on save render and it will save based on the resolution of your screen, which is in my case, 10, um, 1920 by 1080, but you can click on override viewport resolution and then just make it twice as big. Um, so let's make it, I don't know. Um, I'm going to go 2,500 by 1,800 and wait until this finishes. And then I'm going to finish that render. And yeah, that's how you can render a nice image directly from Painter. And you see, this is, you know, this is very, very powerful. Um, you know, there's, there's a few things, there, there are a few um, things that you cannot do. Like you cannot create lights and make, you know, you're limited to the, uh, to the HDR image that you can load or you can add in Painter or that, you, or that come with Painter. But those HDR images are already pretty good. That's the reason why they are in painter. So, um, yeah, you don't, you cannot create like a super complex lighting scenario, but just to display it and, and to render your, your work just like that. I think it's a super powerful thing, um, to do. And then once this is finished again, I'm going to save it. Uh, this firefly filter enable on, I will recommend you leave it on. Um, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure like what it does because I haven't seen much difference, but I, it's, it has to do with uh, really hot pixels or like the, the wide, um, the, the overexposed pixels. So you just have that filter on so that you don't have that overexposure. Uh, but I don't, you know, I would leave it on, but like I said, I haven't seen much difference to be honest. So thank you so much for coming guys. This is the end of the workshop.